is Georgia Southern Football 90, featuring the defending NCAA national champion, Georgia Southern Eagles. This program is brought to you by Team Baden Azuzu. We are the competition. And by Atlantic Cellular, it's for you, Savannah. Now here's your host, Bill Edwards, and Georgia Southern University head football coach, Tim Stowers. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Georgia Southern Football 90 and Coach Tim Stowers, head football coach here at Georgia Southern, getting ready for the Northeast Louisiana game. And, Tim, I know it doesn't get any easier. You're as anxious as anybody else to, to get this team out there. And we've seen improvement every week. Last week, the 34 points was certainly a step in the right direction offense-wise. Well, we came out with a bang, and we got ahead 20-7, to 7, but we made some real critical mistakes, uh, turning the ball over twice in a row in our own territory. And you can't do that against a good football team like East Kentucky because, obviously, they turned it around, and they made points out of our turnovers. Plus, our defense, with a sudden change of the of the ball right there, our defense has got to be good enough to hold an opponent to a field goal in that situation. No matter if it's on the one yard line, the 25 yard line, or where it is, if they can do that job, then you know that'll be a big turnaround right there for us. That'll be a big help. This is a team that we haven't seen in a while. Uh, again, like uh, Eastern Kentucky, we didn't play Northeast Louisiana last year. We, we've split with them uh, the times we have played. What do we know about them? Do they have some of the personnel we've seen before? They've got a great quarterback, Doug Peterson. He, he's mobile. Uh, he had a great game against uh, Stephen F. Austin last year for like 615 yards passing. <laughs> uh, they got Cisco Richard, who would be a great A-back for Georgia Southern. He can catch the ball. He has the ability to make you miss out in the open field. Uh, they've got a linebacker named Moon that's a great player, about six foot 240. they got a defensive lineman named Amos that's got a lot of ability. They have a lot of ability on defense, and they dress out nice. Uh, they've got good players, and we're going to have our hands full this Saturday if we're going to expect to beat uh, Northeast Louisiana. Secondary be tested a lot too, right? Right, our secondary will be tested, but the best pass coverage or the best pass defense is a good pass rush. One thing that's going to be a big key is that when Peterson is pressured, he likes to kind of dash out of the pocket and he breaks contain and that and then he picks up second, third receivers or he can he's got enough ability to run with the football. That's probably going to be the key to the football game, not letting not letting Cisco Richard have a big play and containing the quarterback and getting pressure on the quarterback with our defensive front. Well, I know back's against the wall, but uh, we have uh, some good support. Fans got in it last week, and I think you, you put them back in it with that with that spectacular finish, and we just want to keep them in it all four quarters this week. We did. The offense showed up somewhat last week, and they started looking more like the Georgia Southern offensive old. We started clicking. You know, we've had two big plays for the first time this year. I uh, had a long touchdown pass to Terrence Sorrell, and Joe really looked like himself running you know, his favorite play. And he outran everybody over for a 43-yard touchdown. The defense played good early, and then we had a big low. We were really flat at halftime. We've got to come out and play 60 minutes of football uh, because everybody is gunning for Georgia Southern. Everybody points to Georgia Southern and say, hey, that's the team we want to beat. That's the big game on our schedule, and our kids have got to understand that, and we've got to be able to meet the challenge. And we'll be back with the first half of the Northeast Louisiana game after this. The Eagles came out fired up Saturday, but it was Northeast Louisiana who looked ready to play. On their first possession, the Indians started like Sitting Bull at Little Bighorn, with number 42, Roosevelt Potts, leading the charge. Nine yards on a draw play. Potts then took NLU up to their own 48 on another draw, good for 15 more yards. But it wasn't long before the Southern Inhospitality Committee got stoked. Quarterback Doug Peterson rushed this third down pass that reached the ground long before it reached a receiver. So it was Georgia Southern's turn, starting from their own seven. They came out of the hole fast. On first down, quarterback Raymond Gross rolled right and tossed a perfect strike out to Darrell Hopkins. A superb 24-yard effort that took the Eagles up to the 44. But if you like that, stick around. You'll love this. On second and eight from their 46, Eagle helmsman Raymond Gross scrambled to his left, looked deep, and uncorked a 56-yard bomb to wide open Carl Miller that caught the Indian secondary flat foot. A perfectly executed play that put Southern up seven to nothing. 
guys knew that this was crunch time, crunch, crunch time. We uh, we realized we may be going home for Thanksgiving this year for good. And uh, I think the guys just got just got out there and got intense and played wild-eyed and crazy. We got the job done. Blocking a lot better along the line, and they were throwing when they were throwing deep today. Boy, you caught one that was just absolutely. I mean, they couldn't have drawn any better. The offensive line did a great job, and Raymond did a great job auto, and that was an audible. He checked that. He checked that. We the coaches that called one play, and Raymond audible at the line of scrimmage when he uh, recognized the defense that they were in. It was just, it was just a great play, a great throw, and a great catch. A seven nothing lead on these guys hardly seemed insurmountable. Still, the GSU defense gave only a little bit. Doug Peterson's flare pass out to flanker Keith Bilbo on second and ten got five, but his third down attempt to Cisco Richard was off target. Not that catching it with Michael Berry breathing down his neck would have been a pleasant experience. So not only did the Eagles get the ball back, NLU punter Chad McCarthy did the Eagles a favor by shanking it to the right. A 28-yard punt that had Georgia Southern in business at their own 46. The old Eagle Express suddenly seemed to be traveling on a new set of rails. Gross and company got tracking with a pitch to Joe Ross for seven yards around the right side. And on third and two, Raymond ran the same play using Daryl Hopkins as the pitch man this time, and Daryl turned the corner for 16 more. And in stark comparison to last week when practically nothing on the option was going right, this week it couldn't go wrong. A pitch to Ross picked up another 11 yards down to the NLU 19. But things bogged down a bit, so ever-reliable Mike Dowis was called upon for a 33-yarder to tack three more points on Georgia Southern side of the scoreboard and a 10-0 lead. Once again this week, kickoff coverage was superb. Don Norton continues to impress, booting him a country mile, and watch Norton make a superb tackle on the play that separated Keith Bilbo from the football. Fortunately for Keith, a teammate was there to recover it at the 23. It was at this point that Southern fans realized it was a little too early to relax. The Indian blitzkrieg began immediately. Doug Peterson fired to Kenneth Burton for 17 yards up to the 40. Then Peterson scrambled out of the pocket and hit Roosevelt Potts, who wove his way through traffic before Paul Sickley and Mike West could bring him down 23 yards later at the Eagle 37. And on a third and five play from the 32, Peterson faded to pass, found his receivers covered, and like a good little Indian chief, took off for the happy hunting ground and went in unscathed. The Indians were within three points but it would be as close as they'd come. No eagle feathers for their war bonnet this day. Two can play at this Blitzkrieg game, and it got started with the kickoff. Rob Talent's terrible kick was taken by Carl Miller at the 19 and returned 22 yards up to the 41, and the Eagle Express was in business. On second and 13, Raymond Gross rolled out to his left and fired a wide open Daryl Belzer for 21 yards down to the Indian 41. Very late in the quarter, on another second and 13, Raymond scrambled for 15 yards down to the NLU 29. And watch this once more from the secondary as Raymond slips through that narrow gap and heads upfield for first down yardage. Fullback Joe Ross got the second quarter off to a great start, taking Raymond's pitch on a third and one call from the enemy nine and carrying it down to the one. Watch this again from the secondary as Joe comes right at him. Two plays later, he'd be in the end zone. On second and goal, Ross fertled his way to pay dirt. If you think this is easy, watch Joe get hit hard at the apex of his leap here on the replay, but hang on to the ball and give GSU six more points. Mike Dowis PAT make it seven. Southern had rebuilt their 10-point advantage, and the Eagles were cooking. We felt like we were a better team. We felt like we were a better team than we've been showing all season. 
We just we just need to get it together. I think we got it together this week. That was obvious. I mean, everybody was working. The, the line was blocking better. You were running great. Uh, the, the long passes were good. The field goals were great. Everything. Everything just fell into place this week. Uh, and I hope that for the rest of the season it keeps doing that. You know, we had our share of bad luck in the last four games. And hopefully we just started a new season. Came out and played a complete game and executed and put the ball in the end zone. And our defense stuffed them all day. So, you know, we play a good, uh, a good complete game. And this is what we're capable of. If there was a disappointment for Georgia Southern on Saturday, it was not taking advantage of the turnovers that could have put this one out of reach much sooner. Watch GSU's number 47, Nick Davis, a true freshman out of Griffin, make two superb plays, stopping this off-tackle slant on first down. And on second down, when Doug Peterson decided to go upstairs, look what was waiting in the attic. Young Mr. Davis had his first college interception. Yeah, in the steps, he really threw it to me. You know, I was surprised. <laughs> it's shocking, but it felt good to have it. Any kind of way you can get your first college in the steps, it feels good. Well, not only that, but I mean, it was because it was a surprise. It's it's easier to drop those. I mean, you're 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 in such shock that you got the football that you don't hold on. To. I had dropped so many in high school like that. I went back to let that one go. <laughs> Coach would never let me live with it. So. Late in the half, Southern did take advantage of a Northeast Louisiana mistake. On third and one from their 40, Doug Peterson's pitch to Cisco Richard wound up on the ground, and it was a hey, Cisco. Here comes the kid. The kid in this case was another freshman out of Thomasville, Alex Mash. The football belonged to the Eagles, and with 31 seconds to go before intermission, David Cool was just that. Cool, as he nailed a 44-yard field goal to give Georgia Southern a 20-7 lead at the break. So what makes these kids so strong anyway? Meet strength coach George Smith at halftime. Before we go further, let us make a note in passing to a passing Saturday afternoon. After years of faithful service, the Georgia Southern College Eagle became history. He, alas, could cheer no more, moving on to that great national championship game in the sky. But more not for the old Eagle, for he served us well. For now in his place is the new Georgia Southern University Eagle, ready to lead us on to new heights in the future. The GSU Eagle. The New Eagle leading the charge, Georgia Southern increased their lead on their fourth possession of the third period. Two big plays in the scoring drive came courtesy of Alonzo McGee on second and ten from the 45, the first, a 25-yard leaping reception not to be believed on a pass by Raymond equally incredible. Watch it again for the awesome athleticism alone. Then on second and nine from the NLU 29, McGee took Raymond's pitch around the right corner and got first down yardage to the 17. You'll also get a chance to see this one from the press box perspective. The 55 yard seven play drive wound up only two plays later. The final 16 yards via the Utah pass to Carl Miller, who cut up field to the outside, kicked in the afterburners, got a key block on the five by number 16, Chance Ward, and was in the end zone for a 27-7 Georgia Southern advantage. This time, however, Northeast Louisiana did answer. To make a long story short, the key combo in the drive was quarterback Doug Peterson to tight end Kendall Farrar, who was about as big as Brooklyn. This one was good for 14 yards, down to the Eagle 18. And on third and nine from the 17, Peterson and Farrar hooked up for what was left of it to cut Southern's lead to 13 as the third quarter ticked into history. The fourth chucker began with the Eagles, while not answering in kind, at least answering. And most of it came in one huge chunk when Raymond Gross chunked it. 
53 yards down to Terrence Sorrell. First down for the Eagles at the Indian 14. We got the guys that go out and get the ball. We got the A-backs coming out the backfield, and you got two great wide receivers. We got a, a crop of great wide receivers that can go out and get the ball. And, you know, Terrence Sorrell showed his speed today, and Carl showed his speed also when they went deep to go get the ball. Raymond was right on today, boy. He hit you right in the numbers, didn't he? Right on the numbers. I, I've been asking for that all day. You know, I, I wanted to pass. I needed one, you know, to get me through it, to make me feel like I contributed to the team. And I was glad, you know, to get the call. Throwing the ball better than he ever has. He understands the offense better than he ever done, and he really, he really played a fine football game. I'm so proud of Raymond, also. A couple of bombs today that were just gorgeous. Threw a couple, threw a couple of bombs. You know, we got to throw it deep. We got to mix it up a little more uh, until the offense line. They're getting better and better, but we're just not good enough to pound the fullback, fullback up in there every play, and we have to mix the things up as we go. But the double E ran out of steam again after using so much in one burst, and it was Dallas time. Mike responded with a 27-yarder for a 30-14 to 14 advantage, and that got the defense all the more fired up. From then on, Peterson and company just petered out with Steve Busoletti charging in and Mike West and Darius Dawson covering the receivers. The Indians didn't have a prayer. And when third and seven arrived, so did Mableton senior defensive end Giff Smith, driving between two blockers to sack Peterson for a six-yard loss. Beat sacks today. Oh yeah, you know, I had one. Giff had, I believe, three, and uh, Jack Harris had one. And you know, we got back there. That's what we needed to do. The DBs did a good job covering. You know, covered sacks. It was a great day. This looked like the Georgia Southern of old. You guys really putting the pressure on the quarterback and, and forcing them to do things they didn't want to do. You know, after three losses, you, you got to do something. And you know, <laughs> we just made up our minds today, and we did it. The defense did a great job. They were kind of swarming the football. You know, they had a bad case of the wants. And that's all it really takes. And if they just really want to have that bad case of wants, I mean, they can make things happen. You know, they can sack the quarterback, they can cause interception, they can cause fumbles. And we really came together as a football team. I'm so proud of this football team coming out of the, coming out of the hole that we dug ourselves in. Of course, we played against some good football teams, but that's not a very good excuse. And the assistant coaches for doing such a good job of putting the, you know, putting the plan together. To, tent, to beat Northeast Louisiana. We worked all week on becoming a unit, you know, talking as in we instead of I. And uh, after the game, Coach Stowers gave the football to the seniors. He felt like we get, uh, finally getting a good senior leadership that uh, the team needed. And it's just good to see it come out like this way, and especially to bounce back in front of the home folks. You know, the draw, you know, as much rush as we're getting against them, they're going to run the draw against us. And that's a play you're going to get a few yards, but they can't make a living at it. And uh, we're just happy to be able to get some turnovers for the offense. Meanwhile, those turnovers led to Southern or anybody else's last score of the afternoon as David Cool drilled a 44-yarder for the final 33-14 to 14 margin. Well, we, you know, we've been working hard in practice. Coach Stowers put a lot of emphasis on kicking game during practice, and uh, it, it was a total team effort today, and we, we stood up to the challenge today. It wound up where Georgia Southern was doing everything right and Northeast Louisiana everything wrong like Kevin Whitley's pass interception late in the contest. And fullback Lester Eford running like animated concrete. I mean, yes, the offensive line, it was coming off the ball pretty well, and it was just all about matter of means, just getting the yardage up the middle and the tough yardage and just running hard as I can go. And that's pretty hard by anybody's standards. Lester's run deserves one more look, and Coach Stowers will be back with a final comment in a moment. 